Hello everybody, uh, I wanted to talk about Da Nang, Vietnam. Um, it is one of the most awesome places, uh, tourist places in the world. Um, it's up there with Bali uh, and Phuket, Thailand, um, and many other places. Um, one of the interesting things about Southeast Asia, um, if you're looking to travel here, um, is that the safety is a major factor. So basically what you're looking at here is uh, <clears throat> Da Nang and uh, the airport is right over here, uh, which you'd probably land in here. Um, and then most of the beach uh, along uh, the eastern side. There is another beach uh, kind of on this side here, um, but it's not um, as big and as nice uh, potentially, but it's a little bit different. It's harder to get to um, because a lot of the hotels are not in that area. So let's uh, position this uh, so you know where we're at. Um, so basically China, uh, Shanghai, uh, Korea, Japan is all very far north of here. This is much warmer temperature. Um, this is down near Taiwan uh, and Manila, Philippines and Bangkok. Um, so basically it's in between Bangkok and Manila and that's right on the coast. Now Vietnam is basically a coastal country. It's all the coast. Uh, pretty much of most of Southeast Asia here, um, and it's right next to China. And so it has quite a lot of coast um, line, um, perhaps as much or even more than uh, Thailand um, uh, and about as much as Malaysia. Um, however, one key difference is there is a lot of beach along uh, Vietnam. However, one interesting thing is uh, this little red dot is uh, Da Nang, and that's the airport there. I'll just uh, show you here, it's Da Nang International Airport. There isn't a whole lot of major airports. Red airports are bigger uh, than the yellow, yellow or orange ones, um, but basically uh, Da Nang is a major airport, including Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City down here. Um, and you'll see that the rain is very significant. Um, it's actually some of the most rain in the world uh, actually comes in the winter time here. So uh, around October is a heavy rainy season uh, and that is in the almost meter, that's like one meter of rain uh, in that month. So basically in winter time, uh, that's when they get the rain here and then in the summertime, um, it actually dries up. Now in terms of population, uh, most of the people in Vietnam actually live in uh, Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City as you can see here. Um, it's not really as populated um, as China as you can see up here. Uh, China has quite a lot of population and certainly not as populated as India. Um, so there's definitely a difference there, um, but there is a quite a lot of population as well. Uh, da Nang is kind of uh, in between uh, Ho Chi Minh uh, City down here uh, and Hanoi. Uh, here's kind of a circle around it so you can kind of see Bangkok over here uh, and Manila on this side over there. So here's kind of a tourist uh, plan that I set up uh, starting at the airport here. Um, if you land in the Da Nang airport you'll see um, you'll basically exit from the terminal uh, right over here. So I was a little bit surprised um, <clears throat> Typical Saturday uh, around 1 p.m. Uh, bus number six here uh, takes about an hour just to get to the beach, even though it's only one mile. Uh, so that was kind of surprising to me. Uh, but just for safety factors, it may be wise uh, to take a taxi as well. And you can see here, it's about $10 or so, um, 100 to 150 uh, Vietnamese uh, currency, uh, or basically uh, five to say $10 uh, at most. The bus, however, picks you up from this area. <clears throat> Looks like uh, it takes you to this little uh, circular area here and then crosses the Dragon Bridge uh, right here, which is a pretty famous bridge, uh, and then heads over to uh, the beach uh, from there. So, and it lets you off at this little hotel uh, <clears throat> right here, and then the beach is right there. I'll just zoom out and show you the full route. Um, but that's the main one. It looks like there's a couple other buses um, that do do different parts of the town. Um, I'm not sure uh, how safe uh, some of these other neighborhoods are, uh, but right near the beach is pretty safe. Um, and then uh, maybe near the airport has a couple areas that aren't so great. Here you can see the climate. Um, basically, it's about like Florida, uh, but actually a little bit wetter, uh, actually quite a bit wetter uh, than Florida. 
Uh, one of the surprising things you may notice about uh, some of these hilly areas and towns uh, is there is a lot of rivers uh, that kind of come down through here. Uh, the main part of the river actually goes a little bit south of the town. Uh, so you can see there's actually some river systems and then uh, kind of the shorefront. Uh, but actually in Da Nang, there's a major river that runs right through here. The town it kind of splits it in two halves. So the beachfront is like over here um, and the other beach is over there. So let's talk a little bit about visa requirements. Um, you do need to get an e-visa and it looks like they're pretty strict on the 30 days uh, in Vietnam. Um, and you may need to actually, uh, I'm not really gonna talk about other kinds of visa types, but basically the whole entire world, uh, United States, Africa, India, China, uh, even a lot of parts of Europe uh, need an e-visa. Uh, before and I would even uh, recommend if it says you don't need one I would still go to the website and try to file it so flights in and out of the country uh, so typically uh, it's gonna be at least a hundred dollars and that's gonna be uh, two weeks in advance um, to most of these places uh, you could end up spending uh, upwards of 200 or 300 dollars uh, for the same week or even uh, same couple days uh, for most of these flights um, so it is a good idea to schedule this at least a couple weeks in advance um, but you can see other flights uh, in Hanoi for example uh, is only $34 uh, $27 to Ho Chi Minh uh, Phuket is $62 and Bali is $105 now flights internationally uh, these are all one-way tickets um, so you can see uh, basically from the United States. So where I live, I have a smaller airport, so it cost me, I have to get to Seattle, so it cost me about $150 to get to Seattle. So for my flight, it would be uh, approximately $600 or $700 uh, just to get to uh, Da Nang. Um, and you can kind of add some of those prices in uh, wherever, wherever you are around the world. But here's some flights for Phuket. So you can see uh, it's like basically $150 if you want to do following day um, or uh, basically $85 uh, for a couple, a couple like two weeks in advance. Here's flights to Bali, $105. Looks pretty stable and it actually even goes up sometimes uh, further in advance. Um, so the price is pretty stable to Bali. This is one of my favorite ones to check. Uh, it basically shows you the top routes. Uh, so you can see Hanoi. So the cheapest flights are probably going to be to Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh. Uh, you can see Seoul, Korea. Actually, it's going to be pretty cheap because they have 96 flights. Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, Busan, that's Korea. Bangkok. Um, Bangkok again. Uh, Kuala Lumpur. This is Hong Kong. And then Singapore. So all these flights are going to be fairly cheap uh, from uh, Da Nang Airport. And you can see that's quite a lot of flights, 207 flights per week. Some of the cheapest hotels in all of Southeast Asia, it doesn't really show up here on this for some reason, uh, are actually in Da Nang. So you can see uh, there's quite a lot of options along the beach here uh, as well as here. Uh, but I definitely recommend uh, looking close to this area right in here because basically the airport uh, bus is going to come right across here and you're basically going to end up right up here on the beach somewhere. Um, and it can be difficult uh, whether your flight comes in at night time uh, or not, uh, depending on what you need to do. So if you click on the price graph here, you'll see basically the typical price is around $18. That's some of the cheapest I've ever seen uh, in all of Southeast Asia. So basically $30 should definitely get you a room uh, and you can basically get something very affordable uh, here in Da Nang. I like to double check that with Hostel World. Hostel World does show some pretty interesting prices. So it does confirm some of the prices here, uh, but these are all dorms uh, that are dorm room $10, $9, $14, and then privates are around $43. So this actually shows higher prices in many of the uh, categories for single rooms. So you might be able to find a single room uh, on this website just by clicking on this. These are mostly single rooms uh, and you can get something for like $40 or so um, here. Uh, and then you can also select price range. You can bring it down to uh, below 40 and then it will redo it. But it, sometimes it messes up the map, which I don't like. But uh, let's see if I can do this properly here. So search the map. And then it will show uh, just the ones uh, at that price range. I'll show this link uh, in the video so you can uh, use it as well.
you'll notice most of the more affordable hotels moved uh, out of this area. This is right uh, from uh, the, if you take the bus uh, over to the beach, uh, there's basically a couple hotels right over there, but there's basically most of those cheaper hotels actually ended up kind of further on the north side of the beach near the mountain here, and then also south of this like frontal area. So this also shows uh, some of the main flights. It used to be uh, Korea uh, and Bangkok uh, and some other international flight locations. These were the Hanoi locations. So basically Hanoi uh, and Ho Chi Minh uh, had the most uh, flights, uh, but basically these are the international flights uh, in and out of Da Nang. Now, when you do go there, you're probably gonna get a passport stamp, so looking somewhat like this. You'll get one for uh, coming in and one for coming out, and it'll be basically 30 days or less. Uh, and then if you file for an e-visa, you're gonna get something in the email. It looks something like this. This is the actual website uh, that you go to. Uh, you have to submit a passport photo of yourself, and then you do the full passport, and then do your last name here. For your given name, first name, it's kind of funny. They don't just say last name and first name. They just say surname and given name. That's what they say uh, in uh, their own culture. Uh, and then about a full page of just information about what the planned uh, state is. And you can see a uh, number of days, 30 days here. So it seems like they're pretty strict on the 30 days. Uh, for the e-visa page and this is their page for that now I was really surprised uh, the travel state department has a travel advisory page and I definitely check this out for every country that you're gonna potentially visit uh, it does say Vietnam uh, is one of the more safer places in the world uh, so this is about as safe uh, or even safer than Spain uh, according to uh, what they're saying here so uh, which is kind of interesting so last but not least, I just wanted to show you some street view imageries. So basically what I did here is I planned a trip uh, that looked pretty interesting of major attractions uh, and then kind of did some street views. So here's what the beach looks like. Uh, you can see uh, they got these little kind of like hut things. There is uh, quite a lot of rain here. You can see some clouds uh, on this given day, uh, but basically a pretty typical beach scene uh, from right, this is my key beach. Um, and uh, what you might expect. Now, this is the downtown shopping district. Uh, here's the Dragon Bridge. You can see there's kind of a river. It looks like it's pretty polluted, uh, but uh, this actually ends up on the other side of the island, uh, not really near the beach. Uh, and you can see kind of what the shopping mall area looks like, um, but they have kind of a walkway near the, beach, near the river front, which is pretty nice. Um, and then here's uh, one of the caves. Uh, this is kind of further on the south side. It's kind of a uh, pretty cool uh, little uh, uh, Buddhist uh, temple area, um, but also has uh, some cool scenery for you if you're interested. Um, and then if you climb up one of the mountains, this is the beach uh, that we were thinking about staying at right here. Uh, and then this is the other beach on the north side uh, with the river that kind of disconnects them. Uh, but you can see uh, this little mountain area has some hiking trails up here and you can get pretty high up here and it looks like you get a great view uh, with some uh, statues and stuff of the town. Uh, and then this is kind of like closer into the town, um, but you can see um, basically what the walkways look like. It's kind of a small pathway um, right along the hills here. And then this is more of the beachfront area. Um, and then that's kind of the area that you'd walk back into the, um, get maybe a view. It looks like the clouds cover that quite often. So it's kind of quite high. It can be pretty tough to climb one of these hills. It's not easy, let me tell you. Uh, and then here's more of the beachfront. Um, here's kind of like what one of these like little beachfront uh, areas look like where you can hang out, um, get a drink and uh, chill by the ocean. And then this is one of the main walkways. So as you're coming into town uh, from the airport of the beach, you might this might be one of your first looks uh, at what the beach would look like. Um, and you can see kind of the walkway here as well as kind of almost a temple structure here with some dragons on top. And then here's one of the many bridges. There's a bunch of these bridges. Uh, this is the Dragon Bridge over there that you can see. This is a bridge right next to it. Uh, a lot of scooters all around uh, Vietnam. Uh, almost no cars you can see in this particular image, but all scooters. So kind of an interesting image. 
Uh, and then another bridge, this is the main uh, bridge heading out into the uh, bay here and you can see it gets very rainy sometimes and a meter of rain or more is a lot of rain to get. So believe it or not, we just covered Da Nang, Vietnam. Um, it is one of the more awesome places uh, in all of Southeast Asia to travel to. Uh, you can see Bali is down here, uh, Phuket is over here, uh, and then Da Nang. Um, so, and actually it's one of the more affordable places. Um, I would say more affordable than many parts of the Philippines as well, um, and certainly more affordable than uh, Phuket and uh, Bali. Uh, so believe it or not, Da Nang is a pretty awesome place uh, to check out uh, for uh, tourist attractions. Now, uh, as you can see, if you remember, there's a very serious rainy season that comes in here around October, so you gotta be careful uh, in October uh, about Da Nang. But this does change quite a bit. Uh, if you look uh, just a few months later, uh, let me just do uh, November, you can see there's still a lot of rain there, but it's kind of moves south. Um, so this is still, uh, this actually moves into Malaysia here. Um, there's another really cool city to check out there, um, but you can basically see um, that the rain does kind of stop after, I think, January, February here, you can see. So this is kind of more normal rain area. Uh, down in February, you can see uh, 50 millimeters of rain uh, would be quite uh, perfectly fine. Um, and then the other map, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention here is the airports. Uh, so basically there isn't a whole lot of airports in all of Southeast Asia. Um, it is very hard to land on some of these lands because there is volcanoes, a lot of hills and mountains. Uh, so it makes it really difficult to build an airport, let alone have a nice beach right next to where you want to land the airport. So here you see Goa uh, and Mumbai uh, off in India. So Goa is another alternative. Um, and then you can see Phuket, Thailand right over here. Um, as a major airport, and then Bali Dunsbar Airport um, right over here. Um, so basically there are a number of other airports to check out, um, and you can basically check out this little listing. So there's basically $100 two weeks in advance you can get most of the flights. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this study. Please let me know what you're thinking about. Make sure you do file for an e-visa beforehand, and make sure you get out by 30 days. Otherwise, they do give a heavy fine. Um, and there has a number of other places to check out, so it's pretty easy to fly uh, to another destination from Da Nang. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this study.